Did I just spend the whole video with one of these tucked inside my shirt the whole time? That is gonna drive me absolutely mad in the edit. Hello and welcome back. And do you remember this? This is the Arico Cyber Data Vault. This was announced that we talked about around about mid-June when we had a couple of prototype units in development on this NAS series. The Arico, a brand relatively well known in the areas of storage accessories and network accessories, were taken to having their own NAS system. And after I did that prototype review, I made it very clear that it was a prototype of something going under crowdfunding, and I would return to the subject of this later on when the crowdfunding was live and summarize everything that's changed, everything for the good and for all the bad. And that's what this video is. So with about a week or so left on their crowdfunding, Let's talk about it, what they've changed, how they've dealt with their campaign, and ultimately, whether you should back this or not. But pump the brakes, kid. Remember, this is a product currently in crowdfunding, and even though Rico are a brand that people are aware of for their accessories and storage devices, this is still a product on crowdfunding, and then you don't have the same securities and guarantees you do with traditional retail. Also, Rico are definitely going to launch this on traditional retail, but I will add, as you can see from the prices on screen, getting a crowdfunding is substantially lower in price for the hardware level, particularly for the 1240p CPU version and that by. So again, do keep in mind this is crowdfunding and although there are savings to be made by being an early backer of a product, this is not the same as traditional retail. Use a credit card where possible and be aware. Now, if you didn't catch my original reviews of the prototypes that Arico sent me, I've linked to that video in the description below. There's currently six or seven different profiles with three different CPU profiles and a myriad of different hardware and M.2 NVMe profiles. I recommend you check it out. And I will say very early doors, I've not been sent the newer generation device, the upscaled and improved thermal version of the Arico system. So I am gonna be talking about that in this video, but keep in mind, I have not received it and I am basing this on the information the brand has supplied me. So again, pinch of salt, but let's crack on. At this point, I've become a relative soft expert when it comes to monitoring NAS devices on crowdfunding. I pursued a lot of them, and of course, we all know the name of the worst one out there, Storaxa, but when it comes to their campaign thus far, Again, this is an established brand. I think a lot of users were kind of surprised they were going down the crowdfunding route, but I will say it's been very well handled. Um, they have crossed easily into the half million dollars bracket with 833 backers. Key point there, it's 833 backers. Some of those backers might have ordered multiple. Bottom line, that means we're looking at a lot of hardware uh, is being ordered. Probably something that surprised me of all of the solutions that they've listed there, different storage profiles, the most popular clearly is the 10 by $899. Again, very early uh, promoting pricing on crowdfunding. I get it, I really get it. 899 for a 10 by storage system at Gen 4, an i5 built in with M.2 NVMEs top and bottom, with 10 GBU USB 4 in the works? I get it, looking at that storage profile right now at traditional retail costs a heck of a lot. But still nonetheless, even caught, I was caught slightly surprised by how many of the biggest unit of the lot sold more than anything else. Now. The way the brand has handled the campaign, I would say for the most part, has been pretty good. This obviously isn't an indication of the finished product, but still nonetheless, when I look at the way Rico have been dealing with comments, uh, suggestions, and more importantly, huge lengthy queries uh, about people's uh, backing of this campaign, I will say they have been detailed. They've answered every single question that I could see on there. Uh, the only thing I would say, and I get it, it's a crowdfunding thing, it's fairly standard. I don't like the whole kind of cringe add a social comment winner thing. It's nice to win a docking station, it's great, but that really does muddy the water for me in terms of the integrity of the comments. Nonetheless, overall, I really like what they've done in terms of managing their campaign. And with a week or so left to go, there's not really been any drops, other than perhaps they could have been a little bit more fruitful on the updates with three major updates in this period. Now, throughout this crowdfunding campaign, I will say, as you can see from the update scrolling here on screen, that they have still been adapting onto the software there and adapting a lot of the feature set of what the product is able to do. And even though the majority of people haven't got hands on, it's still nice to see development there. And I've been managing and looking at the updates during that time as well. And these 
are for the most part true. I couldn't really go into a lot of the bug fix type stuff because obviously you need to have a certain situation to emulate that. But when it comes to a lot of the added new additions and features, they were appearing on there. So for example, the new addition of Google Drive in there may seem like a small thing to you, but when I was doing my original prototype review, I didn't like that something as universally accessible in the West as Google Drive was not available. It is on there there. Um, on top of that, uh, localization on there, they've had a few different regions, but I will say that Western or English uh, language localization, localization could still be better overall. Um, I will say one nice addition that I saw on there in terms of the software is now Thunderbolt networking is available. Something that I was really disappointed wasn't there out the gate. So for those of you that want to take advantage of the USB 4 ports for direct connectivity, you can do that. It's supported in the, the OS. It's supported on the base OS as well, whether how much of it was them tweaking it and how much was the uh, base source OS adding that feature. Still nonetheless, it is on there. And now when you connect to this device, I tried it with a Windows uh, 11 environment. I was able to see the Thunderbolt as a network connection at 20 gigabits per second. And there's two on there. Lovely to see. Now, the biggest change that I can see that has happened during the course of development on this campaign I will say is to do with thermal management. Those of you that watch my original prototype review that one of my biggest issues I had with it during that time was heat. Now, less so uh, the standard class series there, but when we're looking at the ones that are the 10 GBE uh, 1240p uh, CPU equipped devices there, those ones were getting warm. And to say warm was an understatement. That top panel was getting remarkably hot there. So before we get onto the changes about specifically the M.2 slots, when it came to cooling, uh, they've updated several times that they have now uh, scaled up the cooling system, particularly on the Tembe, but also on the other Pro Series models. So for example, the internal fan there, which was a fan-assisted plate heatsink fan there, has now got a second stage uh, vent uh, chamber added into it, a much larger surface area with copper piping under and on top to assist and aid heat dissipation into that second stage ventilation. And with regard to the temperature at the top of the device, because during my prototype review, I'd noticed that the top plate was getting remarkably hot and therefore the SSDs themselves were getting ludicrously high temp. Uh, they are going to be in, uh, including uh, gamer tier heat sinks with the Pro and the uh, larger scale devices there. There is another heat sink collection that's arriving with the non-Pro device. It's a little scaled down there, but they are including better heat sinks uh, included with the package with the M.2s. Again, I don't have it here. This is all based on what the brand has shared on their updates along with some other images that I've chased them up for. But still on the list, I don't have a huge reason, reason to doubt them and this is only gonna be good for managing those temps. But even with improved cooling, it has to be said that the M.2 temperatures on this were a little bit wild when we had the device in operation there. Now, they have now readjusted the M.2 NVMe PCIe layout um, of the individual drives and their performance speed there. And although I don't think it's going to please everyone, I will say it's probably a little bit more sensible for what this device is trying to do. So the two M.2 NVMe bays at the base are now going to be Gen 4 times 4 which again, lovely stuff, super high performance. You're talking, again, your 7,000 megabytes per second Gen 4 SSDs, lovely stuff. However, the top ones have now changed. So the ones at the top have now been changed to Gen 3 times 2. So you're looking at, you know, shy of 20 gigabits per second or two gigabytes per second. There, obviously, it could be throttled down. Realistically, you're looking at about 1.4 to 1.6 gigabytes per second performance on there. Now, prior to that, it was three times four at the base and three times two at the top. So at least they've scaled those up for that Pro Series device, but they've separated those out and at least maintained that performance threshold there at the top. So it is an improvement. Again, I'd like to see how that plays out in terms of temperatures and thermals, and hopefully when we've got a device here in the studio, then maybe we can learn more about that in real. But for now, I'm pleased that they are making these additions and at least showing a little bit of willing towards change in the layout. Now, back when I reviewed the prototype, I received it in late May, early June. When that arrived with me and I was doing all of my testing of that prototype, I wasn't aware of how the Kickstarter crowdfunding was actually going to roll out, the pricing, the tiers, that sort of thing. So when it did go live, one of the tiers I was surprised about was the one with the integrated graphics card. Now these bundles that involve the GPU, they've actually tweaked this during the course of the campaign and they've now upgraded uh, the Thunderbolt 3 docking stations that were originally going to be rocking out with those bundled orders into a Thunderbolt 4 uh, and USB 4 version there. 
Um, it's just a small update I wanted to include because I think a number of users that backed the larger Tembe also backed the Tembe with that GPU. So going for that will result in uh, an external GPU box there with a more flexible PCIe arrangement if you're going to be using one of those uh, USB 4 ports to take advantage of it. But that's really it. Like, as I say, with about a week or so left on this campaign, what do I think of it? Well, my views haven't changed substantially since reviewing the prototype. I liked the product then, it did need work, and I will say that if everything that the brand has said and promoted on their updates is true, this is only a good thing. It's actually improved and, frankly, has made me look forward to getting hands on the real finished product in the end, because thermals was really the only issue for me. With promised improvements in feature set, improvements in the performance that I observed there, and ultimately, with the brand keeping people updated, as an established brand, by the way, where, frankly, a little over half a million is not really worth torpedoing your brand over in terms of, is this a scam? No, I don't think it's any kind of scam. I think it's real. Bottom line, do I think they're gonna deliver? Yeah, I think they will. I think a Rico are a big enough brand with a long established history that they're not going to tank the company over a, a Kickstarter scam. Now, do I think they're gonna deliver on the promises they're making? I would say in terms of software, yes, because they are using a pre-existing uh, source base for that software. In terms of hardware and the cooling, I'm gonna have to wait and see until I get hands on it myself. But for those that have backed the Tembe solution, again, at 899, even if you only get it, to just lump on a third party OS, which by the way is still supported, remember, it's a really good price. Just make sure because it's crowdfunding that you understand it's not traditional retail and you use a payment method where your money can still be retrieved with service providers there. Nothing against a Rico, it's just what crowdfunding's about there. Bottom line, I look forward to talking about this again later this year when the finished, fully specced cooling system solution arrives. Because when this does hit traditional retail, it ain't going to be those prices there for what we're looking at here. Why they went crowdfunding still confuses me, but for those that are going to get it early doors, I can name a few brands that have enjoyed that. Now, do you want to get hold of one of these? Let me know in the comments. Maybe you're already a backer and this video has either convinced you to stay the course or it's convinced you to jump ship. Let me know in the comments. Now I've linked to it in the description below. If you want to take advantage of that, we do get a small commission on any order that goes via that link. Again, use it, ignore it, open up another tab, go to Google if you want. I'm still stand by everything I say here and I look forward to talking to you in the comments. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.